The musical Anastasia was based off a real life story during the Russian Revolution in 1917. The musical takes place in 1927, St. Petersburg, Russia. Everybody in the town has heard of the attack on the royal Romanov family 10 years prior, in which the Bolsheviks invaded the palace and killed the entire family. Now the people of St. Petersburg live a controlled communist lifestyle as the borders of Russia begin to close. A rumor goes around that the Grand Duchess Anastasia Romanov may still be alive, and her grandmother, the Dowager Empress, who now lives in Paris, put out a reward for anybody who can bring her her long-lost granddaughter. Two con men, Dmitri and Vlad, attempt to turn a local street sweeper, Anya, into the Grand Duchess Anastasia in order to receive the reward and flee Russia. While the audience already knows from the beginning that Anya is Anastasia, just with amnesia, nobody else is even sure of her existence. The musical has many layers to it inside its plot, music, and display. The main ongoing theme that can be found in the play is that denial cannot last forever. According to Psychology Today, denial is used as a defense mechanism in which confrontation with a personal problem or with reality is avoided by denying the existence of the problem or reality. People use denial as a way to push back what they don't want to believe. This can be seen through the plot points of multiple characters in their actions and song. The soundtrack is a very sad and almost disturbing tone which reflects the life in Russia during this time period and how the communist way of life has affected the Russian people. Harsh and sweet and The Russians have given up on their hope of living a normal life, and only the rumors they hear can help them get through the day. The Romanov family has been dead for 10 years up to this point. Though everybody knows this, the people still want to believe that Anastasia may still be alive. Although the Tsar did not survive, one daughter may be still alive. The Princess Anastasia! This type of drama is the only thing that can keep the citizens entertained in the gloomy life they now live. Instead of agreeing that Anastasia is dead and going on with their day, the people of St. Petersburg are excited over the new rumor that Anastasia is just missing and choose to believe that is the case. They can't deny Anastasia's survival any longer because they want to believe these rumors are true. When we first meet Anya in the musical, she is just a poor street sweeper trying to get by with the little money she has. She is scared by loud sounds and acts very shy. It was a truck backfiring, comrade. That's all it was. Those days are over. Neighbor against neighbor. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This shows the audience the trauma she has in everyday life from the vague memories that she has of the Bolshevik attacks. She meets Dmitri and Vlad as they are auditioning women to be their fake Anastasia. She tells them that she is looking for a way to get to Paris because it's calling her. Who are you running from? I'm running to someone. I don't know who they are, but they're waiting for me in Paris. When asked about her past, she explains how she suffers from amnesia and cannot remember her name, family, or anything. The last thing she remembers is waking up in a hospital with nurses who just called her Anya. Rain against a window, sheets upon a bed, terrified nurses whispering over Call the child Anya, get the child out. I don't know a thing before the The music adds to the depressing tone Anya speaks with as she shares her story of how she doesn't know her life but at the same time, shows glimmers of a more hopeful tone in the chorus, as she says she'll figure it out eventually. Dmitri and Vlad decide she's the perfect candidate for them to mold into Anastasia and begin to teach her the history of the Romanov family and how to act like Anastasia. 
During these lessons, Anya gets frustrated as she doesn't like being pushed around to impersonate someone. However, she shows signs of being the real Anastasia when she begins to say things that Dimitri and Vlad never told her, but are factually true to Anastasia. As Anya continues to learn about Anastasia and try to become her, she begins to wonder if she actually is Anastasia, but just doesn't remember. Dimitri shares with her a story of when he was 10 and saw Anastasia at a parade. As he tells the story, Anya said that he bowed to Anastasia, leaving Dimitri bewildered as he never told Anya that detail, and Anya replied with, You didn't have to. I remember. This is the point where Anya became fully aware that she was indeed Anastasia and threw away any denial she had over her identity as it was all coming back to her. For 10 years, Anya lived without knowing her past. She doubted that she was actually the lost princess when Dimitri and Vlad tried to convince her so. But at that moment, when Dimitri shared his story of his encounter with Anastasia, she was in full belief that she had finally found out who she was. The Dowager Empress is completely devastated when she hears the news that her family was attacked and killed. All of them. All of them. All. Ten years later, she heard these rumors of Anastasia's possible survival and put out a reward for anybody who could find and bring her granddaughter to her. She had been in Paris since Anastasia was six after marrying into another royal family. She describes herself as very excited every time she would open a letter from somebody claiming to be Anastasia, only to be disappointed when she recognized small hints that would point that the girl was not her granddaughter, but just somebody trying to seek the reward or get a free trip to Paris. Dearest grandmama, if I may I was never grandmama, I was nana, I was only nana. Grandmama, they played me for a fool. This constant disappointment led to denial in Anastasia's existence, and she refused to read any more letters or speak to any more girls claiming to be Anastasia. When Anya came to visit the Dowager Empress in hopes that she would recognize her as her granddaughter, the Empress refused to believe her and accused her of taking advantage of an old lady for money. What happens? She wouldn't even look at me. Tell this imposter Lily I know her kind too well. She wants money and will break an old woman's heart to get it. This scene reflects how set the Dowager Empress's mind really is, as she is in such denial of Anastasia's survival that she doesn't even attempt to meet with Anya. When Dimitri tells the Empress to open her mind, she realizes that Anya is Anastasia and is reunited with her granddaughter after 20 years. With as much denial as she had about Anastasia's existence, and even with how hostile she was towards Anya, she was still able to recognize Anya as Anastasia because she wanted to believe she was. All of the fake Anastasias writing letters to the Empress or having interviews with her had pushed her to become a bitter old woman who had lost all hope in reuniting with her favorite granddaughter. She meets Anya and, although extremely skeptical, pushes her bitterness to the side and that hope of Anastasia's existence flares back and the Empress can once again be happy being able to say her granddaughter is not dead after all like she had been telling herself. The way the Dowager Empress completely changed her tone and body language when Anya finally convinced her shows how finally being able to believe again in Anastasia's survival overrode the negativity and cold-heartedness of denial. Gleb Vaganov was the general of the Bolsheviks who now controlled Russia. He was the son of one of the Bolshevik soldiers who invaded and killed the Romanovs 10 years prior. He recalls his father coming home that day with Romanov blood on his hands multiple times throughout the play and uses it to convince himself that all of the Romanov family is dead. When local girls tell him of Dmitri and Vlad's plan to turn Anya into Anastasia, he dismisses them as he says that Anastasia is dead and what they do won't matter. Despite saying this, Gleb sends out guards to find the three as they attempt to travel to Paris because deep down inside, he knows Anastasia can still be alive and Anya may actually be her. After the Dowager Empress accepts Anya as Anastasia, 
Gleb travels to Paris and confronts Anya in the castle and is still in denial, telling her to Stop playing this game. Anya, I beg you. We both know it's not a game. Anya tells him that she is indeed Anastasia Romanov, and Gleb claims that he must finish the job for his father and pulls out a gun on Anastasia. The Romanovs were given everything and gave back nothing until the Russian people rose up and destroyed them. All but one. Finish it. I am my father's daughter. And I Though he denied the fact that Anya was Anastasia heavily, he always believed it deep down and acted on it accordingly. Gleb also denied the love he had for Anya throughout the play. Every time he encountered Anya, he is charmed by her beauty and wisdom, despite Anya having a dislike for him. He pushes away his secret love for her as he knows deep down that she is Anastasia and cannot love someone his father set out to kill. She's near at hand, yet here I stand. My heart and mind at war. The times must change, the world must change, and love is not what revolutions hold. When Gleb confronts Anya in the castle, in the background can be seen the deceased Romanov family backing away from the army of Bolshevik soldiers. The contrasting colors of their clothes, along with the upbeat and chaotic sound of the orchestra and the ensemble of people singing frantically, add to the anxiety the audience feels as Gleb points the gun at Anya, reminding them who killed the rest of her family. <laughs> This onstage chaos also reflects the mayhem happening in Gleb's mind as his love for Anya and his commitment to finishing his father's job clashes. But in the end, his love for Anya wins out and he cannot bring himself to kill her and instead lets her go. He can't deny the fact that he really loves Anya any longer and he does not shoot her and instead says that he's not his father's son.